Hi, not deep cuts here. After the success of my Rio Fuku E video, a couple of people did ask me for more Japanese jazz recommendations, so I thought I'd do a quick little video in between making my newest project, which will be on Takeuchi's Plastic Love. Also, I started a Patreon, so if you want to support the kind of work I do on Japanese pop culture and animation, music, whatever I'm feeling like at the time, that would be much, much appreciated because it will mean I can keep doing it. Anyway, so let's uh, let's get going. I'll start by saying this is more of a personal choice list, and there are plenty more since it's such a wide genre. I'm just picking from a couple different areas that I'd find would be approachable for newcomers. Let's start with the man I've already talked about for a whole video, Ryo Fukui. Now, if you've heard of the man, you probably know him for his debut. They got 6 million views on YouTube. He was a self-taught jazz pianist who focused on hard bop and modal jazz towards this clean and catchy approach, with many of his songs being renditions of jazz standards. Now, the longer I've been thinking about it, the more I actually believe that Mellow Dream might be the better of these two studio albums. Mellow Dream has the more original compositions, it's got the gutsier playing, it has more flavor of its own, but also downbeat when it needs to be. It shows better collaboration between the trio, they experiment more, the songs are longer, it's more energetic, sometimes I'd say bombastic, in particular Horizon, which has this great drum pattern in the center stage, it's adventurous, you've got the swing between the piano and the drums trying to outdo each other, just a wild ride, the most danceable thing they've ever done, and a crazy party to boot. And this is why I think the album as a whole lives up to scenery, it's bigger brother. So when this album has not been the life in the party, it can be quite introspective and dour. You've got tracks like Funny Valentine and My Foolish Heart. Now let's move on to a more modern trio with Hiromi, who's been playing since she was six years old. At 14, she was playing with orchestras and was on stage with big jazz players like Chick Corea by age 17. If you can, I'd recommend checking out some of her live performances because I believe Hiromi really does shine in that area because you really get a feeling for the energy, precision and wild, messy kind of playing that she does. So I'm going to be talking about Spiral today, which is her 2006 album and definitely a breakout for her. If we start with the title track, we go from like a quiet, dour performance that changes within about the two minute mark to uh, a jog to a run to just a wild eruption of bass guitar drums and the piano spiraling out of control as it falls into these looser gaps where they experiment and you can feel that post pop sort of attitude come out of them before reuniting with all the instrumentations to really hammer down the rhythm and melody of that song there are also other tracks like outdoor tuning prologue that start slow and quiet and then kind of go a bit off kilter, there's a bit of dissonance to them, they feel as if the track could be melting before they snap back into place and it all comes together with these rising optimistic numbers and it's just an explosion of attitude and at the best of this album you get to see Hiromi's energetic expressive playing at its highest point, say for example on reverse which just pushes Hiromi to her absolute breaking point for six minutes straight, starting a little bit slow once again, but when it gets there, it really does prove how much dedication Hiromi has to her craft. One of the highlights for me is Old Castle, which shows just how easy and playful it is for Hiromi to start in a kind of menacing area, and then move into something a bit more gothic, then perhaps a bit more undercover and bluesy, before jumping into playful, optimistic, and wild note plays. She'll just go back and forth between all of them, at a moment's notice, this track in particular was actually named after a painting, hence why it's such a weird name being Old Castle in a forest by the river and all that. Now, if you're feeling for a more rocking direction, you can move on to Hiromi's second phase, Hiromi's Sonic Bloom, where it is effectively the same trio as we've seen before, but now with an extra guitarist on top. In particular, the guitarist David Fukinski. Well, that's where Hiromi's work really breaks into prog rock, and fusion to the absolute maximum. Okay, let me take you back to the 70s, the beginning in particular, where we have Minoru Maraoka, who was experimenting with jazz standards, but wanted to use more traditional instrumentation so that Japanese jazz could go from being more of a homage to its own sort of creative space. His work is notoriously rare in its own country, and there's very little written about him on the web. But let's just say the music speaks for itself. Starting with Take 5, a classic David Brubeck piece. They sound fresh again with the Shakunachi, 
That's the bamboo flute thing that they all play. That has a very playful air to it. They even added in some more soloing and tightened up the runtime to really trim that fat. There are also cuts like House of the Rising Sun, which of course is the most fitting Japanese cover you could possibly do. And it's no surprise, it's, it's quite the highlight, and it's even one of the few tracks on here that has real electronic instrumentation with its keyboard and crazy little guitar solo that comes out of nowhere, selling the uh, iconic riff of House of the Rising Sun, which may have also been played in a house that was next to a rising sun. The album had a couple of original tracks, like Positives and Negatives, which is about like a 10 minute odyssey, it's an experience to go through, with there's many phases and stand up percussion that just builds up. It's one of the few original tracks on the record, it's cool, it's atmospheric, it feels like an action piece, one of the more sought out samples in the hip hop community, and it even takes the time to have a little break in between, in the middle, where it really builds the tension up as a shaman like percussion just starts beating and beating, and you're just waiting for something to happen, a breakdown of sorts, just to get the whole thing running again. I'm not going to say all of it hasn't aged a little bit, it can be quiche, but Mura Oka deserves more attention over here, and I'm going to link up a little article by NPR about his career and albums in the description. So let's move on to something a bit weird with Yasuaki Shimizu and his album Kakashi. This will be the most abstract pick I choose, and some might say this isn't even real jazz, but I disagree. I believe that Shimizu's performance as a saxophone player, as well as just the huge amount of jazz instrumentation on this album, just works. It just is, in itself, a strange off-kilter jazz album that was trying to push the boundaries of what it really meant to be that kind of album. It takes a lot from its contemporary influences. He's a forward-thinking man, that Shimizu. He has these strange vocal samples and a sonic language of instrumentation that's just uh, in a world of its own. Distorted clarinets next to these angelic marimbas, which I think are just these big African xylophones, if you're wondering. You see it all with the opening track, which begins with this ominous little tune that just comes out of nowhere. And then suddenly you're just in this metallic world with a piston-pulsing beat, an uplifting melody infused with a distant, distorted vocal chant about water lilies. It's, it's a wild, nonsensical, absurdist ride. It feels a bit like you're in a crazy toy shop. and just sets the tone for the whole album, which is how it can radically swing between styles at any moment in its 37-minute runtime. In its self-titled track, we are brought into this dream world where everything is now just really calm and lush. You've got this long, distant echo in the horizon, you got these triumphant horns with a little distortion on them, a little delay, with a, even a soft African-style percussion in the backdrop. It almost feels like I'm on a beach, having a little nice time on the beach alone. As the track continues, the layers of instrumentation just build, but they create such a serenity, they never go too far, it never becomes too overwhelming. Because you can bounce between unsettling and nervous to just calm, serene, or uh, kooky and silly. It can be just a fun time, or it could be a somber retrospective at the campfire. And you won't find many other albums that can do this sort of stuff, and that's why I think I love this album so much. Definitely check it out. It was also just re-released not so long ago, and I'm going to put that in the description too. So let's get to that final album in this primer, Takuya Kurado. We started making waves in the mid-2010s. He's one of the newer artists on this list. He came into the game about eight years ago. Well, he got big off the LP Rising Sun, which I will admit has some pretty decent songs. I like Everybody Loves the Summer. To me, Sig Saga was the album that piqued my interest. It's funky, it's jazz fusion, it leans more on modern sounds that you might hear from Flying Lotus or Thundercat. And it becomes crystal clear how funky he wants to go with the first track, RSBD. Just this epic track, including boundless layers of instrumentation, balanced with an angelic choir. It goes to distance. The rest of the album keeps the funk going. It exudes it up to about 11. The bass lines, the dancing grooves, it's thick, it's crunchy, it's a wild performance. At times I think it's almost a bit too overwhelming. It could have done with maybe some more variety. Though it does become a little bit more down-tempo as the tracks go on. At least that is until the final track, which is a cover of Think Twice, which also features the talents of the Afrobeat group Anti Ballas. And they give the whole final track a, a nice percussion to go with what feels like a, a nighttime party to just to play the album out. 
And that's my list. It's, like I said, a bit more of a starting point. Just a couple of my own personal thoughts. If you have more, please just put them down in the comments. Give people some recommendations. Create a little bit of a debate. Have, a, have some fun, guys. Just enjoy music. Have a nice time. Have a good day. And I will link to as many of these albums as I can in my description. So I will see you when I see you. Stephen out. Love you.